Good morning and happy Sunday, Imago Church family. We're so grateful to be able to gather, build up, send each other out to be reflectors of Christ and to continue to multiply that every single week together. I'm so grateful that in the midst of what has been a very challenging week for myself as well as others, I'm sure, we can take a moment to pause and pray to remind each other of the promises, the power, and the presence of Jesus in our lives. That God's word is true. That God will never leave us or forsake us. That he is with us always, even until the end of the age. I want to give you a very special welcome. If this is your first time with us here in worship today, Please let us know you're there. Send us an email. Send us a line. We'd love to connect with you and hear a bit more about your your journey and um, any ways that we can serve you and pray for you. We'd love to be able to do that. Miss all of you. I miss all of our Imago families, all all of the friendships, all of the conversations, the hugs, the joys. And we look forward to that time when we're able to be together once again. And as we prepare this morning to enter into our time of worship, let's prepare with the Word of God. And this morning's opening verses to prepare us for worship in our call to worship come from the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 12. It's the second part of verse 12. And it says the following, God's people crying out to the living God, For we have no power to face this vast army. We can even say that ourselves today. We have no power to face these vast problems, these vast stresses, these vast challenges. We have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. That's our prayer this morning. Let's pray as we prepare for worship. God Almighty, we give you thanks and praise because in those moments where we have no words, Lord, you are there. In those moments where we do not know where to turn, Lord God, there you are. And God, I just pray that this prayer from your scripture would stick with us this morning, would stick with us this week, especially when we feel overwhelmed, when we feel challenged, when we feel frustrated, when we feel stuck and fearful, Lord, may we hold on to these words. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you, Lord. Our eyes are up on you, focused on you, trusting you, trusting that you are at work even when we don't feel it even when we may not see it you're bringing it all together Lord Jesus hear our prayer this morning and prepare our hearts Lord to enter into the joy of worship because it is only the joy of the Lord that will be our strength that will give us the perseverance to carry on forward. We love you, Lord, and we pray all this in the faithful name of Jesus. Amen. Family, friends, brothers, sisters, let's open our hearts, stand, and lift up our hands as we worship. Church. So glad you guys are joining us. Just sing these words out with us. Sing oh precious is a flow that makes me white as snow. Oh no what found I know I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in our soul. Blood of the Lamb, I'm not a slave to what 
consistency in this season father when everything else lord in this world is just chaotic lord you are consistent your love is consistent thank you so much lord for your faithfulness in our lives i just pray lord that we all just take lord this time to recognize that father and just to give you everything lord so that you can do miracles through us father have your way, Lord. Have your way with us, Lord. We just want to press in, Father God. We choose this moment to press in, Lord, into your worship, Lord. Of your grace, 
Yes, Lord, it is the goodness of God that sustains us, the goodness of God that keeps us going, Lord. One week after another, one foot in front of the other, Lord, we hold on to your goodness, we hold on to your mercy, we hold on to your grace, God Almighty. And Lord, right now, we just want to dedicate this service to you. Take your rightful place as the center, the center of our church, the center of our lives, the center of our households, God. And Lord, we just pray that you would rain down. And today, Lord, open our hearts, open our minds, speak to us directly, speak to us clearly, Lord. May we experience this new life, this new creation, this transformation through the power of worship, through the power of word, through the power of prayer, through the power of being one body united in you. We love you, Lord, and we once again submit, yield, and dedicate this service to you. In the faithful and mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. At Imago Church, we believe that we can experience the hope of Christ through restored relationships, through restored relationships with God and restored relationships with each other. One way we express that every single week together here at Imago is through what we call our Hope Through Relationships greeting, where we take an opportunity to greet one another in the name of the Lord, and we also connect with the question to go deeper, to go beyond just surface level, to be known by one another and to know one another. And this week's question is the following. We had some pretty crazy air quality this last week and some of us here in the valley were allergic to all kinds of things. So how about for you? As you greet one another in the name of the Lord, you can connect with this question. What allergies do you have? And if none, how do you stay healthy, especially during this time? Eat well, sleep well, exercise well. What do you do to stay healthy? A uh, healthy mind, healthy life, right? Healthy, healthy body. And so um, what does that look like for you during this time? 
I know that I enjoy running around after the kids. Doesn't that count as some kind of exercise? Well, we sometimes go on walks too, so that's a lot of fun. But uh, what about for you? What are you? What allergies do you have? And if none, how do you stay healthy, especially during this time of social distance and uh, staying at home? Uh, what does that look like for you? So let's go ahead and take a moment to greet one another in the name of the Lord and to connect with this question. We continue to pray and to navigate this time together in this season of pandemic. We lift up um, each other. We lift up our city, our county, our state, and our country as we continue to just take it really a day at a time here and trust God with all the outcomes as we take the responsible and wise actions uh, he calls us to. And we're discerning through just ways to continue to connect as a church community, even as we're socially distanced, figuring out ways to create spaces for connection, even um, and for mindful uh, connecting points, uh, gatherings. And we're just really open to the Holy Spirit guiding us on what that would look like during this time. And if that's something that you would like, we'd love to hear from you please contact us at the church number or the church email and let us know what you think. We would love to hear your heart and your thoughts around this. And really, we are open to the Spirit's leading in this time with regards to these matters. And these are important conversations and very important decisions and discernments that we need to make together as a community as we seek God's wisdom. And there are ways that we can still remain connected as we navigate this season. We've made the shift to online community and online worship and online fellowship as well. Every single Sunday before service, we have a time of online fellowship and prayer. And that's through Zoom. So we, you can get the Zoom link. And please make sure to join us every Sunday before service. We have some fellowship time from 8.50 to 9.05, and then we pray. We pray for each other. We pray for our church. We pray for the families at Imago and for anything else that may be on our hearts from 9.05 to 9.25, and then we all prepare to get on to the worship service together online immediately afterwards. Every week, we have our online services on both Facebook Live and YouTube, and there are also other ways that you can stay connected through a Spotify, through wherever you get your podcasts, and through a variety of different ways as well. We have a prayer line as well as a church. And you can go ahead and uh, just give us a call. I've been so grateful to those in our church community that have picked up the phone and called to just check in or sent an email and, ha made, and um, made some time for just connection and pastoral, pr pr pastoral prayer and pastoral care. That's meant so much. I've loved hearing from you and would love to hear from everyone else in our church community as well, just how you're doing and how we can be praying for you during this time. We have a prayer team that meets weekly to lift up the different um, petitions that are on our hearts and intercede for the different uh, families at Imago Church as well, and all the different prayer requests that we're navigating as a church community. And we look forward to finding different ways of connection and discipleship on a midweek basis um, as the summer draws to a close and as we prepare for the fall. We look forward to ways to being able to connect with midweek Bible studies and midweek prayer gatherings once again in, uh, in the next uh, few weeks into the end of August and into September as well. So we'll keep you all posted on how on those developments as well. Um, and in the fall, we look uh, forward to picking up once again ways to connect youth through different types of virtual gatherings or distance gatherings for this time. And also you can connect if you're a young adult 
uh, post high school to early 30s, you can connect with the young adult ministry that meets for uh, fellowship through Zoom. Um, th it'll be this Sunday at 6 p.m. through Zoom, and then every other Sunday. And then there's a young adult Bible study on Friday evenings on the Gospel of John. So you can go ahead and uh, get that information as well. Um, just send us an email or uh, connect with us through the website or through um, our social media platforms. All the information should be there as well. And we are in the process of developing a children's ministry portal where we're going to be adding some playlists on our YouTube channel and, um, for different uh, children's songs and uh, Bible stories for Sunday school that you can do with your children right at home. They've been very helpful for my family, and we hope that they can be a blessing for your family and all the children of the church as well in the month of August and in September as well. We're now going to come before the Lord, and we're going to pray. We're going to bring our true selves before a true God. And this is the time that we like to call the prayers of the people or the prayers of the community, where we bring our burdens to the hands of the Lord that can really sustain the weight of our souls, of our lives, and of everything that we're carrying as we come before him this Sunday. We'll take this time to pause, to pray, and trust God as we continue to press on, as we place faith over fear, as we pray that God would move us forward as a community, that God would protect our families, our city, our state, our country. We pray for the world. We pray, and we're going to take a few moments to just lift up anything else that may be on our hearts. Take time to pray for children, for just these new fall routines that we're looking into as well. But now, as one church body, let's take a moment to enter into the presence of our living God and pray. Oh God of life, would you continue, Lord, during this time of unfamiliarity and of strangeness and of restlessness and of anxiety, Lord, would you continue to fill us with your peace, that peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding. Give us, Lord, that peace and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of, of comfort. Lift from us, Lord. Lift us from any despair, from perhaps any loneliness or isolation that we may be feeling today, Lord. And help us to claim the new life that we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. God invites us into an adventure of generosity. And one way we can live into our generous giving is through our tithes and our offerings. There are several ways that we can give to build up God's kingdom here at Imago Church. And if this is your home church, we invite you to give and give generously just as God is generous in pouring down his goodness on us. We can give online, uh, online giving at imago.churchcenter.com slash giving and just follow the instructions there. You can also give through check. Just simply make out your check to our parent church, Sunrise Community Church, and then write Imago Church in the memo line. You can also give through text. You can simply give by texting the dollar amount to 
84321 on your phone, and then you will have instructions there that you can follow along with. And then finally, you can uh, send your check through mail. Send to P.O. Box 1319, Tulare, California, 93274. These are all the creative channels and creative ways that we can continue to give to build up God's kingdom here at Imago Church. We're so grateful that we get to be on this mission together in seeing God do extraordinary things through ordinary people, through the adventure of giving and generosity. Let's now take a moment to pray for our offering. God Almighty, the silver is yours, the gold is yours. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. That includes our time, our treasure, our talents. And we just pray, God, that you would use these offerings, these tithes, for your glory to build up your kingdom here at Imago Church, Lord. Thank you, God, that you have been faithful before. You continue to be faithful now, and you will be faithful once again. So Lord, right now, we just pray that you would take these offerings just as they are, Lord. And would you multiply them for your purposes here at Imago, for your purposes and your kingdom's sake, Lord God. May these funds be used, Lord, to continue to bless, to care for, and build up your people here at Imago and those we serve around in the community as well, Lord. We give you all the glory and honor because you're worthy of it, God, and we just declare as we give generously, God, that you are our sustainer, you are our provider, God Almighty. So, Lord, would you take these hands, take these offerings, And would you do great things with them, Lord? Take these ordinary things and do something extraordinary. That's what you do, Lord, and that's who you are. We pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We're going to continue now in our time of worship by opening up the Word of God. And as most of you know, during this time, we've actually been in a series on the book of Proverbs. And next week, we're actually going to be finishing the book of Proverbs and the series that we've been on and this challenge that we've been calling the Proverbs 31 Challenge, 31 days in the month of August and 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs. I have just been so encouraged and so grateful for all of the reflections that have poured in from our church community during the in the messenger group and also in uh, other uh, platforms that we have. So that's really just a skill and a muscle that I want us all to continue to grow in together, to just be able to read the Word of God, reflect on the Word of God, and um, and really share it with one another and build each other up through God's precious word. And that's something that we're going to continue to do even in the fall with having different um, Bible plan readings as a church community. So next week, we're going to be concluding our series in the book of Proverbs. But today, we're going to have a special standalone message to really just be able to get some hope together as a church community. This has been a very challenging week, nationally, worldwide, and personally for me, and I'm sure for others in our community as well. In some ways, it's felt like a very overwhelming week, and so I just want to be able to have a bit more of a heart-to-heart pastoral time together during this, this time of the message to really just be able to remind each other of the presence of God in our lives, even when we don't feel it, even when we may not, 
immediately see it. To remind each other of the promises of God, especially when we're experiencing hardship, pain, and suffering. And to remind each other of the power of God to take us through absolutely any obstacle in this life. So as we prepare for that, we're going to read a scripture, and then we're going to pray and jump right in. And today's scripture reading comes from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. And I'll read all the way to verse 7. You can follow along in your Bibles, or you can hear God's word read aloud and displayed there on the projector screen. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 7. Let's hear now with open ears and open hearts from the word of God, beginning at verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings that we suffer. And our hope for you is firm. Because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are a God who shows up. Not a God who is distant. Not a God, Lord, who is apathetic, Lord, but a God who comes to us, a God, Lord, who sees our cries, who hears our cries, who sees our suffering, Lord, and you show us that you understand through the power of your cross, Lord, and you show us, God, that there is resurrection power, Lord, to get us through absolutely anything, God, and that the spirit that we have, Lord, is the same spirit that rose you, Jesus, from the dead. We have access to your Holy Spirit, to your power, God Almighty. And right now, Lord, I just pray that you would give us that power, give us that wisdom, give us that strength to not rely on ourselves, but to trust in you more than we trust in anything or in anyone else. That's our hope. That's our prayer today. Guide us. Speak to us. We pray this all in the faithful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Wow. So this year, 2020, has been a year unlike any other year that I have experienced before, and perhaps like a year unlike any year that any of us have experienced before. This year has been full of stress, of unknown, and of anxiety. And while we're navigating the COVID pandemic during this time, we are also seeing the movement for racial justice battling the injustices of the sin of racism. This sin which has been called the pandemic even before the pandemic. At the same time, we're also experiencing economic stress and economic strain unlike any that we have seen in ages or even in generations. Yes, my heart and my prayers are with local businesses and business owners. And on top of all of that, it's a big year. It's an election year. There's political strife. There are divisions. As, an, as, an, in an, as a nation, in the same way, there are also church disagreements and divisions 
amongst different types of churches and in decisions being made on how to respond to the season of pandemic. There are educational battles on how to best and how to most safely and effectively and responsibly educate our children. These are all local and live issues for each one of us. They impact the life of each one of us and the life of our church. All of these matters have come to our doorstep. And then on top of all of that, on all of those on top of all of those once in, in a generation issues there's the emotional the family the 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 physical and mental health stresses that are simply a part of life even before the pandemic even before all of these things named all of the regular life on life's terms continued challenges they haven't stopped they continue So where do we go from here? The bottom line is that it's a lot. What we're going through right now, it's a lot. It's a lot for me. It's a lot for you. It's a lot for us. And we continue to navigate it. And it's unclear when it's going to end or when it's going to change. But one thing that I'm grateful for is that it's not just me going through something or you going through something, but we as the body of Christ, as God's family, we are all going through a lot right now. And we're together even though we're apart. I want you to know, friends, brothers, sisters, I want you to hear this from my voice as your pastor As a friend on the journey as well, I want you to know that you are not forgotten. You are deeply loved. You and your family are prayed for. I care for you so deeply. I love you deeply. Our leaders love you. God loves you. I want you to know that all the decisions and all the discernment during this time has been based on that, on a genuine love and a genuine care for you and for your family. Please, let's not get it twisted. That is what drives us. The love of God, the love of each other. And sometimes it goes unspoken, but I want to be clear about this. We love you. We care for you. Not just for your spiritual well-being, but also for your physical well-being. In the coming weeks, we'll be sharing more about how we as a church community, how we as a church leadership, how we discern and arrive at these decisions that we're making on how to continue to move forward, how to continue to discern in-person gatherings, the process for that. These are very difficult decisions, and they're made with heavy hearts, but they're made with a heart of love. We love you. We care for you. We wish there were quick fixes. We wish there were easy answers, but the truth is, they're not. There are not. but we hold on to Christ and we hold on to each other. We'll be sharing in the next couple of weeks what the process and what the metrics are for discerning next steps, for discerning in-person gatherings, uh, even socially distanced, for discerning life together groups online and discipleship, all of that. We're having to live and lead from this place where we are. Not from where we used to be, not from where we want to be, from, but from where we are here and now. Those are the live decisions and discernment that is happening. And I want you to know that you are cared for, you are loved, and you are prayed for. You are not alone. Please continue to pray for me as I do so for you and your family as well. As a church family, we are navigating this time. And I want you to know that I know, I know it hasn't been easy. 
it has not been easy for you. And I want you to know that that is something that I think about a lot. Every day, I think of you, I pray for you. I want to remind you that our prayers as a team, as a leadership team, as a staff, as ministry leaders, our prayers are with you. So we pray for you and we're with you. And I want you to know that this time has not been easy for me either. In really just continuing to lead by faith in this time. It has not been easy for me. It has not been easy for our church leaders. It has been exhausting and challenging for our ministry leaders and for our staff team. Everyone is exhausted. Everyone is frustrated and everyone is anxious. And yes, everyone is even a little bit fearful. I've felt it before. In the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of discouragement, in the midst of just what feels like massive disruption. As I've been on the phone and Zoomed and uh, having distance meetings with, uh, with different folks from the church, one pastoral care question that has come up several times during this season has really been a question behind the question. And it expresses itself in so many different ways. When someone asks how long, when some, someone asks when will, will, will we, back, we be back together, when will this end? I know that the question behind that question oftentimes is a deeper one. And it's the question that is asking, if God loves us, then why are we going through this? Why do we go through pain? Why do we go through suffering? And how, in the midst of this raw and real time that we're in, how do we hold on to, to faith? How do we hold on to God in the hard times? If God loves us, why do we go through pain? And why do we experience suffering? How do we continue to worship a good God? Yet there's suffering in the world. That's a very real challenge, a very real tension that we're all facing right now. And before we get into just uh, diving deep into the scriptures and to those questions, I want us to just take a couple of moments to pray. Pray for yourselves, pray for each other, pray for me, I'll pray for you as well. So let's go ahead and just take a moment to pray together and then we'll come back together and just dive in to the rest of God's word here this morning. Let's pray. Lord God, you are as real as the air that we breathe. All creation points to you. Lord, you give us a pathway back to you always, Lord. And God, I just pray that you would continue to strengthen us and carry us, Lord, even when we feel we can't take another step. Would you be the one to hold us, Lord? Give us wisdom, give us courage, give us confidence in you today, we pray, Lord. In the faithful name of Jesus. Amen. So many of us during this time have experienced suffering and hard times. Some of us even right now, as you hear this message, you're going through a very difficult time in your life. And there's that question behind the question, how is it that we worship a good God and yet at the same time we navigate through pain, through hardship and suffering? Well, what I've come to learn when it comes to experiencing my own suffering 
or in serving others in their times of pain and suffering, I've come to learn that the first step in serving someone that is suffering is not a quick fix. It'll be a temptation to just give a quick fix or some kind of religious cliche to make ourselves feel better. But the first step in serving someone that may be experiencing pain or suffering, the first step will be comforting them. And one of the best ways to comfort one another is by just being present, even at a distance like we are during this time, by being consistent, by being faithful with one another, by showing up. We can, conv- we can really provide this deeper type of comfort through presence and prayer, rather than simply giving quick fix answers that make us feel more comfortable but can be inappropriate, especially in times of challenge and suffering. Yes, there are answers to these deeper questions, but I've found in all my years of ministry and even in my life experience and being a follower of Jesus, that there's a more profound answer in our suffering and in our pain. Even more profound than answering the question why is coming to answer the question who. Who is with us during our suffering and our hardship? One of the names of God in the scriptures is actually the name Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God with us. God is with us. I've found that the person that is experiencing pain and suffering must first be inspired by the people of God before they will be inspired by a good argument or a good religious cliche. God calls us to show up just as he has shown up with us. God calls us to show up, to pray, and to point to the presence of God. One of the oldest stories in the scriptures is actually a story about a man named Job. And Job was a good man who loved God, and yet he suffered. He experienced true joy in his life, and he experienced true pain. And during the time that he's experiencing deep pain, he has different sets of friends that come alongside him. One set of friends tries to just give him quick fix answers tries to give them the reasons that uh, why this is happening or not happening, and all of that is just noise and causes more, more stress for Job. But then there's another set of friends that just show up and they are present with Job, and they point to a living hope in a living God. And that's what we're called to do with each other to point to a living hope, even when everything around us may seem just confusing. We're showing up for one another because someone has shown up for us. God came to us in Christ when he didn't have to, but by his grace, he chose to be with us. He chose to be Emmanuel, God with us. We point people to a living hope and we show up in suffering. We show up in difficult times. We don't just run away or do the isolating thing or pretend like I got this, right? That is going to be a natural inclination and a natural temptation when things get hard to just run away or to isolate. But God calls us in times of suffering, in times of of pain. To do the opposite. Rather than turn inward, turn outward to Christ and to community. Let others show up in your times of suffering, in times of difficulty. So, what do we do? How do we comfort someone going through pain and suffering like so many of us are right now? Maybe someone in your household is during this time. We point to a living God, we pray, we listen, and we just remind 
one another of God's presence, power, and promises. Friends, brothers, sisters, this this Bible that we open up every single week together, every day together, even at home in your own devotional, this, this Bible, this Word of God is a calling that really calls us to draw near to Jesus. And as we draw near to Jesus, we will draw near to his heart. And as we draw near to the heart of Jesus, that means that we will love deeply. And those who love deeply also suffer deeply, just as Jesus did. The Bible, and especially through the life of Jesus, we're reminded that we have a calling if we're followers of Jesus, and it's a calling unlike any other calling but it is a calling to follow him all the way to the cross. It is a calling to suffer. When we serve God and others, when we love God and when we love others, we will also experience pain. We will also experience suffering. As C.S. Lewis once said, to love is to be vulnerable. To love is to be open to pain and to absorb it. If we're followers of Jesus, then it's part of our calling. And it's almost a gar- it is a guarantee that we will experience true love and true pain in this life. The Bible encourages us to believe that suffering is not just some kind of curse that's based on what was done or left undone. No, but the suffering that we experience, especially as we're aligned with the heart of God and we're following Jesus, suffering is a part of the calling of those who follow a living Lord, Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Master, the one who the prophets in the Old Testament call the suffering servant. 2 Corinthians 1.5 reminds us of what this journey will be like what this journey we're experiencing right now may feel like. 2 Corinthians 1.5 tells us, For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. Our Lord Jesus is the ultimate example of suffering while not being at fault. Yet he suffered. Similarly. When we suffer, while not being at fault, or when we suffer in a way that doesn't make sense to us, we're truly and mysteriously being molded and made more like the image of Christ. You and I follow a Savior called the Suffering Servant, and we will be a people marked by our suffering. In fact, Jesus, in his physical resurrection, he was still marked with the scars and the wounds in his hands. In fact, that's actually when the disciples really discovered and were convinced that that was really him by the scars and the marks on his hands. And I know this can seem confusing. It can seem counterintuitive. How exactly does this work? How does carrying on the mission of Jesus lead to a calling to experience pain and suffering, to experience deep wounds and also deep love? As Christians, as followers of Jesus, we have a new identity and a new purpose in Christ. And this new identity and this new purpose aligns us to identify, to align our hearts with a Lord that is called a suffering servant. A Lord who absorbed pain on our behalf. A Lord who came with a purpose, who took up his cross to lay down his life for others. That's who we follow. Being saved while still suffering, while still experiencing pain, and unimaginable pain for some of us, 
That's a very real tension that the people of God have experienced throughout history and throughout the world. In scripture, we see that those who follow Jesus experience both deep wounds and deep love, deep pain and deep joy. They believe that they are God's people with their new identity and new purpose in Jesus Christ, but they remain in this world. You and I remain in this world broken by sin, separated from God. We remain in this world suffering simply because, at times, simply because of following and confessing Jesus as Lord in the context of a broken world. A broken world and broken people, imperfect people, seeking to follow and love and serve a perfect God. As we engage in loving those that God has put in our lives, in, in, in loving the world just as God loves it, as we engage in serving God and serving others, as we love God and we love people, as we do so, we will suffer. Remember, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we're given that classic definition of love, right? That we love to read out in weddings or in special events or whatever it may be. But what the definition of godly love begins with the line, love is patient. But in the Greek, the word for patience, and, and that part of the Bible was originally written in ancient Greek, the word patience and the word for suffering are the same exact word. In fact, in the Greek, the, the, the word actually says, the definition says, love suffers long. So when we choose to love deeply, we will also experience times of deep pain. Because the love is to be vulnerable. And I know this is not what some of us expected in following Jesus. Maybe we were <laughs> promised all kinds of things. Maybe we were promised the absence of pain. Well, that's not reading the Bible honestly. The Bible does tell us that we follow a suffering servant who took his cross, who came, died, and rose again. But yeah, maybe it's not what some of us were expecting as we chose to follow Jesus. But in fact, our suffering is an indication of us being in accord with the example, with the life of Jesus Christ who suffered on our behalf, who absorbed pain on our behalf. When we engage the world, when we choose to love deeply, that means that we will also suffer as he suffered. Again, 2 Corinthians 1.5 reminds us of this in case we get it twisted, in case we forget, for just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. We will suffer as Jesus did and we will be comforted as Jesus was because he is our comfort, he is our peace. I know this may seem confusing, this may seem paradoxical and perhaps strange to some because Jesus is calling us to something bigger to something bigger than just me and mine, to something bigger than just my ego or my neat expectations of what this life owes me or doesn't owe me. And although it's challenging, the most profound part of our suffering is that our pain actually tells a much bigger story. Just as Jesus' pain on the cross tells a much, much bigger story. Our pain, our suffering can point to a living Lord. In fact, this is true in every part of our lives. Nothing good in this life comes without suffering. All life comes from death. All new things come from old things. 
ending and new things coming. The good news, the gospel, is that we are not called to do this alone. God is doing something new that changes everything, but we are not called to go at this alone. We have this common calling. Our suffering has a purpose. Just as Christ's suffering had a purpose of pointing to God's salvation, to God's new creation, to God's good news, restoring all things back to himself. This is the bigger picture that our suffering as followers of Jesus can also point to. Now, just to be clear, this is not a call to get some kind of thrill or strange pleasure from suffering, but when we suffer, we trace it all back to the calling that we have, to the calling of following a suffering servant who took up the cross, who rose again. The incredible fruit of our calling is that through being faithful in our pain, in our suffering, we may serve in bringing about the redemption of others. In our suffering, in our pain, we can point to Jesus. We can point to the one who brings about true healing and true peace and true comfort. To be followers of a suffering servant means that we will be suffering servants of our world. We will be pain absorbers at times in this life. That actually means that we're aligned with the Lord Jesus. His way that took him all the way to the cross. He laid down his life. We're called to lay down of our lives just as Jesus did for us. Friends, brothers, sisters, as we just engage with these hard matters in our world, in our hearts, in our households, may we not give in to the myth or the, the cheap, quick fix answer that our suffering has to do with some kind of punishment or that our sufferings are God's response to sin or his disappointment in us, in his children. No. God's not mad at you. He loved you so much that he'd rather send his son to come and die. He'd rather die than live without you. That's the grace and the power and the mercy and the redemptive love of God. What scripture here is suggesting is the complete opposite. No, God's not just trying to get back at you or us. But our suffering is even part of the confirmation of our calling. Our calling to serve as God's people. Our calling to be those who carry our crosses, who follow Jesus in this life. Of deep pain and deep joy. To learn true love and true suffering. This is who we are. If you hear anything today, I just want to remind you that God's got you. He holds you in his hands. He, he is with you. And I know you may not see it. I know you may not feel it. I know it just, you may not sense it right now, but he is using this, whatever you're going through, this pain, this suffering, this hardship, this unknown, he is using it for a purpose. He is using it for something greater. There's a testimony in the works here. So hold on to him as he is holding on to you. Do not let go. He will never, ever let go of you. Hold on. Trust in Jesus. And he'll grant us the courage to continue to move forward. Because this life, and I've said this to many before, this is a journey of life often marked with tears. Jesus isn't afraid of this. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he was sweating blood before he took the cross. 
and I'm sure he was shedding tears before God the Father. And some of us know exactly what that's like. Some of us know what it means to go through sometimes long journeys marked with tears, marked with suffering. The truth is that we all shed tears. I don't care how tough or emotionally stable you think you are. We all cry. We all shed tears during this time of challenge and pandemic and ups and downs and roller coasters of emotions. I've shed tears. I'm sure some of you have at home as well. The reality is that Scripture has a lot to say about our tears. Scripture has a lot to say about crying out to God. God says in his word that when you cry out to me, I listen. When you cry, I am close to the broken hearted. Today, may we take that courageous step in being real with God and real with one another. Being real in our joy, but being real in our suffering as well. May we cry out with the assurance that the creator of the universe holds us and reminds us that we are loved, that we are not alone, that we are cared for, and that no matter what, it's going to be all right. You're going to be all right. And because of Jesus, because of his death, and because of his resurrection. Yes, it's true. We are going to be all right. This too shall pass, and this too is passing. One foot in front of the other, keeping our eyes on him. He is with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. I think this is an opportunity to be able to confess. One of the simplest definitions that I've ever heard for what confession is, it can sound like a big intimidating word, but confessing simply means telling the truth. Telling the truth about God, telling the truth about ourselves. And this can be a time to just be honest, tell the truth. And we can learn to read the Bible honestly and truthfully as well. The Bible doesn't try to hide this from us. It does tell us that in this world, we will have trouble. We want to keep coming back to the victory sometimes, but we forget that we cannot understand the victory of the resurrection without the pain and the sorrow and the suffering of the cross. So friends, brothers, sisters, younger, older, I want you to hear this. Do not be surprised by difficult days. Do not be surprised by difficult days that have come, that are coming, or that will come. The Lord is at work. He is at work in the mess. He is at work in my mess. He is at work in your mess and our mess. He's bringing it all together. May you and I, as his faithful followers, may we keep our eyes on him. May we abide and trust in the promises, in the power, and in the presence of Jesus at work in our mess. We're reminded of this in John 16, 33. And we'll end with these words from Jesus himself comforting us and reminding us of times and eras and years such as this. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. 
But take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen. Let's pray together. God Almighty, we thank you because you are the overcomer. Thank you, Lord, that right now we're able to take stock of our hearts. Right now, Lord, this is the time to confess. This is the time to tell the truth. The truth about ourselves, the truth about, our, uh, the truth about you. The truth that we are more broken than we want to admit. We are more vulnerable than we want to admit. And the truth, Lord, that you are more gracious and you are more powerful than at times we want to admit. Help us, Lord, to take proper stock and inventory of our hearts this morning. Help us today, God Almighty, to receive and enter into your promises, your power, and your presence here and now. God, may we be reminded that you live up to your name, Emmanuel. You are with us. God is with us. Person at home, person with family, I want you to know that God is with you. Our pain, your pain, your suffering, that's not a disobedience, but it's fulfilling our calling as suffering servants. God, we dedicate this time to you. Some of us perhaps feel stuck. Some of us feel like we can't get any traction to move forward here, Lord. Some of us just have no clue what's next. And if that's you today, I just want to invite you to place that before Jesus. Are you in a season where doubting, you're doubting the promises of God? Where fear is much louder in your life. I just pray that today you would draw near to Jesus. Say, Lord, I need you. Be my Savior, God. Teach me your ways. Guide me, O Lord, I surrender. Abide in him. My prayer today is that we don't just slide away from God's power and into self-reliance. Some of us are exhausted and it means that we need to stop. Stop running. Stop running away from God's power. Stop trying to do this on your own. But lean on Him. Let Him carry you. Trust in His presence. Because the truth is that without His presence, we will not make it on our own. Many haven't but he will carry us through. One day, one week at a time, one foot in front of the other. Thank you, God, for revealing to us your mercy, your grace. We need you. And we declare as a community our full trust in you, Jesus, our living hope. In your name we pray. Amen.
living hope. Thank you, God, because you came, you died, you rose again. That our hope, Lord, goes beyond circumstance. Our hope goes beyond even our pain, even our suffering, even our hardships, Lord. But the hope that we have, Lord, is a hope that has the final word on our lives. 
a hope that reminds us that even the worst things, most painful things, most stressful things, most burdensome things will not be the last things in our lives, Lord. You, by the power of your life, death, and resurrection, God, have given us access to a vibrant and living hope. Not a passive hope, but a living hope that we can hold on to, that we can embrace, God Almighty. And Lord Jesus, we just pray, Lord, that you, God, would just be lifted up, that you, God, would just continue to work in and through our lives, Lord. Thank you that we've been able to just refocus our thinking onto you this morning, Jesus. When we don't know what to do, our eyes are on you, God. Show us the way. Show us your way. In the faithful name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, it's been such a joy to be able to worship together this morning. We've taken time to rejoice, to reflect, to respond. And as we close out our time here, I just want to invite you to continue to pray. Continue to pray and discern on behalf of our church community and just this season that we're all going through together. Let's be reminded of that, that we're going through it together. No one is alone. You will never be alone with Christ at the center and community around you, surrounding you. And we're looking for different ways to continue to stay united and press on, especially as we look into the fall. We're uh, going to be um, opening up conversations and having opportunities to join online community or socially distanced gatherings to be able to grow deeper in our, in our discipleship and grow wider in our love for one another. So please, if you ever need to talk or pray with anyone about anything, we're here would love to connect with you. I, as your pastor, would love to spend time and pray with you and your family. And um, we have a prayer team and leaders and ministry leaders that would be happy to do so as well. Just go ahead and email us or call that number, text that number, uh, the, the church line. And we have this opportunity to be able to carry one another during this time. We'd love to hear from you. Any questions that you may have, don't keep them to yourself. Let us know how you're doing, how you're feeling, how we can serve you, how we can pray for you. And we continue to discern through just God's pathway and leading for us during this time. So, so that's my invitation to our whole congregation. Continue to pray, stay committed to one another, stay connected to Christ, and let's keep the channels of communication wide open. Let's not give in to just drifting or isolating because we are one body of many parts called to do life together. So I just want to remind us all of that to just continue to keep Christ at the center and community around you. It's been such a joy to be able to worship together today and to stay connected. And throughout the week, we can continue to stay connected through a number of uh, creative ways, call each other, connect with each other. And then in the fall, we're going to be starting up once again our midweek prayer and uh, discipleship groups as well. And we'll have more information on that in the weeks to come. But as we go out from here, would you receive this blessing, this benediction to send you with God's peace wherever you go this week? It comes from the book of Ephesians chapter 3, beginning at verse 20 receive this blessing. Now to God, who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we ask for or imagine, according to his power that is at work in us and through us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen.
Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Go holding on to the power, the presence, and the promises of Christ. And this is his promise to you. I will never leave you. I am with you always. No matter what. Those are the promises of our Lord. Take them as you go. May God's peace, God's blessing be with you. And we'll be here once again next week for worship. Go in God's peace. Blessings. Blessings.